Hi there. I've uh, finally gotten around to uh, my mini camera review of this ancient beast that was sent to me by Ronnie Pittman quite some time ago. Now, this is a Coolpix 990 from Nikon. Uh, I showed it in an earlier video, so it's uh, you should already be, fa be familiar with the tricks it can do. The rotating camera unit and the stationary control unit. Uh, this particular camera, uh, like many cameras of its day, uh, runs on AA batteries and uh, for a memory card, as again, most of these early cameras uh, had either a proprietary card, like uh, Smart Media, which was the little flat slip cards, uh, or uh, something like an internal memory or whatever, but by all means, the most popular in that period was Compact Flash, because Compact Flash due to its rather substantial form factor, Compact Flash, uh, because basically it was a rather large package, so it could take the much larger uh, electronics of, well, this is getting, uh, what, 18 years ago or more. So, um, without further ado, uh, as I said, I've already given a description of the camera. Uh, you will find that in an earlier video. This one is just to let you see the results you can get from a camera like this. Now remember, at 3.34 megapixels may not sound much to us now. But in actual fact, a full HD 1080p screen is only around 2 megapixels. So this is capable of doing quite uh, good results for online sharing and things like that where typically you are looking at image sizes which once they are cropped or resized for social media are probably no more than two megapixels three megapixels is actually a bonus these particular cameras were in their day uh, I guess what you call semi-professional cameras. They were definitely enthusiast level cameras. Something like this was quite expensive. I mean, this was not something that the typical snap shooter went into a store and bought. So until digital SLR prices got within a reasonable range, something like this was what most people aspired to. Anyhow, here are some sample images. Now, uh, they're not in any particular order other than the order they were shot in. Uh, I was trying a number of different things. For one thing, the fact that this camera has the rotating unit meant that it was quite suitable for selfies. So here you see a flash selfie. Now notice there is a considerable amount of distortion other than the fact that the subject itself is rather distorted. Uh, but that distortion of course is due to the wide angle uh, that I was using for this particular image. So as you can see it's not bad. Uh, the exposure is quite good. It is typical of an on-camera flash in that it does pretty much uh, light the foreground and completely leave the background dark because of the fact that this was not being used with any sort of uh, compensation. It's just as the camera decided. Moving on, this gives you a look at the macro capability. Uh, this particular shot of some African violets, uh, as you can see, is reasonably sharp. Uh, it's not going to win any awards by today's standards, but it's not a bad shot. Quite usable, especially for online work. Uh, here you can see a snow scene late in the evening. And that's why I've left it dark like this. I have not edited any of these images. I have These are straight out of the camera. Uh, they have not been brightened up. I'm sure there's a lot you, you could do with a particular image like this, but I've left it. Here we have the same basic shot, only this time I have used a different exposure to get more of the uh, shadow detail. Remember, cameras like this have very limited dynamic range compared to modern cameras. 
So as a result, the brights get burnt out early, the darks get blocked up early. The result is that you don't want to use this in extremely high contrast situations. Next we have uh, another flash image uh, using the macro and as you can see uh, this is a figurine that stands about about 15 centimeters high. That's about six inches or so. And uh, this is what he looks like up close with the macro feature of this particular camera. Okay, that's shot at a focal length of 23.4 millimeters and a shutter speed of 1 1 20th at f4, ISO 100. Uh, you do not want to go to high ISOs with this camera. Here's a shot out my kitchen window just to take a look at how much detail we can see in a scene like this. Uh, as you can see, the background is actually um, quite pleasantly out of focus, whereas the foreground here, which is the wall of my patio deck, and the solar collector and the hanger for a bird feeder, as you can see, all of this is quite sharp. Uh, these, because of the small sensor and because of the short focal lengths, uh, cameras like this will tend to give you very uh, extreme depth of field. So there's very little worry about focus errors. But as you can see, um, you can still get some out of focus backgrounds. Here's another example of a flash uh, macro shot of a Lego car. So as you can see, this is a very close up shot. These are Lego blocks. You can see the little nubs there to give you some idea if you've ever seen a Lego block of just how small this is. Uh, here is uh, the mini me, the, the little guy my son made for me, my little photographer friend with his Jeep and his canoe. Uh, again, shot with flash and macro. As you can see, the flash coverage is not very good. And it's not something that you would make much use of. Uh, I did it, again, just as a demonstration. The camera in the background, by the way, is uh, a, an old uh, Pentax uh, digital camera. As you can see, we can get quite close to coins. This is a 25 cent coin a quarter. Uh, this is a Canadian quarter, of course, but uh, an American quarter is pretty much exactly the same size. Uh, as you can see, the detail is not too bad. It is reasonably sharp. The depth of field is a little shallow because, of course, when you're this close, depth of field, remember, is partly a function, mainly a function, actually, of distance and aperture. So this is shot at f3.9. The distance is very, very close, as you can see. Uh, it's 22.6 millimeters was the focal length. And uh, as a result, you can see that the, uh, the wattle the beneath the chin of the caribou here is quite sharp. But by the time you get to the top of the antlers, it is already rather out of focus. But not bad. A pretty good example. Most of these old cameras did have quite uh, capable macro modes. Now here's another selfie, this time without flash. Uh, the glare on the glasses is from the, uh, the window. And uh, as you can see, again, fairly sharp, not too bad. This is a close-up shot of a model car that I stuck out on our patio about three years ago just to see how it would stand up. It's doing quite well. It's gone through uh, two winters now. But as you can see, uh, this is shot at 8.2 millimeters, a very wide angle, around a, a 40 millimeter lens. But as you can see, the image is fairly sharp. The red color of the car has come out a rather orange. Okay, its color is actually not quite as orange as it looks in this. So uh, like many cameras, again, from the era, red was a problem for them. They had a great deal of difficulty with red. Here is a shot uh, showing again what happens in a very high contrast situation. This is just a grab shot uh, across my backyard. As you can see, there is some shadow detail. 
the highlights aren't completely burnt out, so it's not too bad. Considering the high contrast, it's uh, actually an image that, other than the fact that it has absolutely no artistic value whatsoever, uh, at least it will show you that this camera can uh, handle high contrast, but not well. A simple looking up shot, one of the... Uh, the projects I've been working on, personal projects, is I've called it looking up or look up. And uh, I've been trying to shoot uh, things from a low angle. So this was just, again, a grab shot. Uh, as you can see, the skies do tend to, to go a little pale. I'm sure that with a little work we could get something out of this image. Here, I was playing around with uh, basically lighting inside, getting in close, shooting at the wide angle and the wide angle equivalent on this camera is only around uh, 30 35 millimeters so i guess the crop factor is somewhere around four point something uh, anyhow as you can see here we have uh, glasses lined up shooting through them and the result is again not too bad it's uh, quite usable uh, you notice that there is a little bit of shadow detail. Look at the uh, the table runner that's in under the glasses, and you can see a fair bit of detail in that. And there's even a little bit left over that hasn't burnt out completely outside the window. Now, you will see fringing. If you look closely, you will see green fringes. You will see some purple fringes. Uh, there is a significant amount of that with this particular camera. Here is another example of a close-up. Okay, in this particular case, it is a close-up of a camera that I am planning on selling, my old Lumix uh, G2. I am not selling the lens, however. This is one of my uh, Sigma lenses. As you can see, uh, there is a little bit of masking flare. I mean, there was side lighting here. This was done to, to test that particular thing. And you notice there's not a lot of contrast. Uh, the brights are not very bright. The darks are not very dark. Basically, the histogram for this is, is rather flat, as the image is rather flat. Uh, another example of uh, shooting out into a rather busy... Uh, background. Uh, as you can see, uh, it uh, handled the red here much better, possibly because it wasn't so strongly lit. Uh, the skies are still a bit pale. It tends to, the exposure tends to go a little bit uh, uh, towards overexposure, just slightly. Here's one more image of the model car. This is directly lit. The color here is not quite as extreme, but again, the, the boards in the background are quite accurate. The color is very, very close to what I see. The car itself, though, because of this issue with red, does tend to be a little bit on the orangey side. Okay, and finally, here's another example of shooting out into uh, just a, a wooded area. And uh, this particular image I like because it seems to have handled all of the different uh, colors and different levels quite well. Having gone through the images, uh, you can now see that although a camera like this is not something you'll want to use every day, I guarantee you that. For one thing, it is slow. It is painfully slow compared to a modern camera. Uh, it also has some interesting features. For instance, it has a focus system that is continuously trying to focus on something, even when I'm not touching anything. I don't know if you can hear that or not, holding it next to the microphone. So it uh, probably doesn't bode well for battery life. Uh, I looked through the, the settings. I couldn't find anything that directly related to that. Uh, it is... Uh, quite a convenient and quite a hefty package. I mean, this thing is made mostly from uh, metal. There is a lot of metal. I think there is 
uh, some plastic in some of the outer shell, but it is uh, built basically to the quality level you would expect from a mid-range uh, Nikon digital SLR, you know, something in the, uh, the, the D300 range, the semi-pro model. So it, it is built, it is built to last. The lens is quite good. The little bit of fringing you saw is probably the only examples I saw, and that was only in a really extreme uh, contrast situation where a lot of lenses, even modern lenses, will tend to do that. Um, overall, I, was, uh, I had a lot of fun with this camera. Uh, would I use it on a regular basis? No. But only because modern cameras have become so much more convenient due to their higher speed and so on. This, this sort of thing will tend to, to gar garner some attention these days because of its unusual design. This design was not that strange in its day because that was a time, as I said in an earlier video, that was a time when all of these manufacturers seemed to be interested in uh, showing that these digital cameras were different from the film cameras that came before. So at this time, you will find a lot of truly bizarre designs, designs that uh, really were dead ends. As I said, uh, it is a curiosity. It is a great conversation piece, and it still takes quite adequate pictures for sharing online. So if you have one of these stuffed away in a closet somewhere, uh, take it out and play with it. You'll probably enjoy it. Again, I thank Ronnie Pittman for the camera. Uh, it has been a blast. Uh, it will get some more use. I'm not putting it away forever. And it may be mentioned in a later video. But in this video, it was just an example of some of the things that you can get from this particular camera. So, if you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like. If you would like to see more of my videos, by all means, subscribe. And uh, if you know someone who might be interested in knowing more about this camera or who actually owns one, uh, they might want to see this. So by all means, share it. Anyhow, bye for now.